He should be. Anybody who puts their hand on a woman or a child, they didn't say specifically what he did wrong, uh, they should be suspended. They're despicable. I, I don't. There's no other way to, to, to present that. Uh, it's happened in the past. I'm sure it'll happen again. Um, we've seen it in every single sport. Uh, Domingo Herman was suspended because of a domestic issue. Uh, and when you serve your time, then, and, and the people, the powers that be, feel that you're in, a, in a, a place that's acceptable, they could decide whether to bring you back or not. I, I don't say that uh, it's, a, um, it's a forever thing. People can get help and, and seek help and be better. Uh, we don't know the inside story of their lives or whatever the case may be, but I'm not going to sit here and defend Jimmy Cordero, who's actually done a great job out of the Yankee bullpen, but if the bullpen collapses because of this, so what? You, you have to suspend the guy um, for whatever he did. He, he violated um, the domestic violence policy, which is negotiated between Major League Baseball and the Players Association, so good for him he doesn't play the rest of the year. Good. He, he better get himself help. Because if he did something like this, he doesn't deserve to be on the field, doesn't deserve to wear a uniform, doesn't deserve to make money. He needs help, and he should go seek help. So what? So I what think it's a great policy. We don't know what happened, Peter. And we don't know what happened, and we don't know what exactly will happen moving forward. It's just suspended for the remainder of the season. Right. So obviously they take it. Whatever the story is, it's serious enough that they're going straight to season ending. Yeah. As it should be. As it should be. Um. Now, toward the more mundane. So, the Yankees have beaten the Orioles the last two games. And the Yankees are in a pretty good spot right now. And I'll get into that in a moment. But, um, so Aaron Hicks returns to Yankee Stadium huh. with the Orioles. <laughs> and I don't know how much of the, the games you've been able to watch, Peter. I know it's, no, all kidding aside, it's been a tremendously busy week for you. But... I have very rarely seen a visiting player treated with such utter disdain and hate that Yankee fans are directing toward Aaron Hicks. And to make it worse, and, and, and listen, I don't know why the Yankees did it, but they they, they did a tribute video, Peter, oh, on I know. Monday. I saw, saw that moving around. And... The Yankee fans booed vociferously after the video. Now, I mean, there are two prongs to this argument here. I mean, Aaron Hicks gets a, a video. I mean, but the Mets did the same thing with a with a player that's like, eh. I mean, to me, it's got to be a star, a real big star, a big contributor to get a tribute video. But whatever the case may be, they, I think the Yankees were erring on the side of doing something nice for a guy. By the way, had been here eight years. It wasn't a short period of time. But what I don't get, and you know what? And Yankee fans could argue with me all they want. I think they were wrong. The the constant booing. Uh, every time he came to the plate, and then when he made it out, the, the, the cheering. You know what that's reserved for to me? Somebody who dogged it. Somebody who dogged it and then ripped New York and ripped the Yankees on their way out. He never did that. This guy is a good guy who t played terribly. So, yeah, if you want to boo him, whatever, the first time, I guess I understand that. And I know what the argument's going to be. He was terrible. I know he was terrible. But he didn't dog it. He didn't rip it. He didn't say the Yankees stink. I hate New York fans. Never said that. And you're treating him as if he's like some criminal. In fact, you've treated people that were criminals way better than this. Fair. I don't get it. I don't understand the hate for Aaron Hicks, who, A, is a good guy, B, really wanted to succeed and couldn't. And, you know, Mike Lupick had a great tweet uh, earlier in the week, Peter. He didn't give himself that contract. Yankees gave him that contract. So are you booing the contract? He didn't give himself the contract. We don't give ourselves contracts. That's not the way it works. Our bosses decide to give us contracts. So, all show, if you want. I want to know why all the hate for this dude. Why? I don't get it. I don't get it. I think it's over the top, Peter, for a guy who is not a bad dude. And, and you know what? Joey Gallo's smart. Because when the Twins came into town, Joey Gallo got hurt. 
he didn't have to deal with this. He'd probably be the same thing. I, I, I would think maybe worse. Or would it? I don't know, because, because he wasn't here that long. Uh, they seem like they've built up this hatred for Aaron Hicks. I can't believe it. I, O'Neill and I looked at each other. I mean, we're not going to rip fans on the Yankee broadcast. That doesn't make sense. That's, it's not a talk show. This is a talk show where I could give my opinion freely. I think you guys are way off, way off base for no reason. If you want to boo him, okay, but to boo him with that kind of ferocity and consistency, I mean, that guy probably, when he hit the home run yesterday, probably the best feeling he's ever had on a baseball field. And he had some big hits for the Yankees, by the way, before he got hurt and his career spiraled out. Again, tell me the times when he dogged it. The one time down the left field line where he thought it was a foul ball and he didn't run hard after the ball, you know what? He got taken out of the game. But I watch that guy work his butt off. I watch that guy because I get to the road games really early because I'm doing the radio show. And I see things a lot of people don't see. He's out there working hard, trying to be a better player, trying to earn the money that he's getting. He didn't phone it in. There are guys that phone it in, by the way. They're on the second bus all the time. The second bus is a very telling bus because that gets there really late. There's a first bus, and then there's a second bus. When you're on the second bus... You can be questioned about, really, are you putting in the effort? I never saw Aaron Hicks on the second bus. A first bus guy. In fact, he's a cab guy. He'd get in a cab or an Uber and go to the ballpark and work hard. But Yankee fans just despise him to a level that is very, very curious to me. I thought the same thing. I wasn't surprised, Michael. I do think this is the era we live in now. I, I know that's kind of a weak place to always go. But it does seem like we've gotten to the point now where if it doesn't work out, the player gets booed. And the, if the Yankees in particular, Michael, every year it seems like there's one or two players who overstay their welcome with the Yankee fan, and by the time they're gone, they're hated. Even if they're not bad guys, if the performance doesn't justify the contract, by the time they're gone, they are persona non grata. So, yeah, I was a little surprised that the Hicks got it because I just didn't think he had that sort of relationship with the fans. Because for, for most of his career, he didn't. But the last year and a half, he, he lost everyone. And really, it was just by not performing the way people hoped he would, not for anything else. Uh, and, and you know what? The, his last couple of weeks as a Yankee, it happened every game. And I, I don't want to get into this argument that you have the right, because that's not what we're talking about. You have the right to boo. You do. So that's not a referendum on that. But the new hero of the booing crowd is Donaldson. And, again, I despise these sort of, like, conversations because I know what the answer is going to be. What are you trying to prove? I had a manager tell me, fans boo, do they, to what end? And I know they're fr frustrated, and Donaldson has not performed well. But to what end? Do you think it's going to make him a better player? Do you think that putting that pressure on him constantly is going to make him better? In baseball, it makes it worse. It made it worse with Hicks, and the Yankees ended up releasing him and eating $25 million. So what's the booing now for with Donaldson? You, what, to what end? What, what are you trying to do? Again, you have the right. That's not the point. Please don't tell me we have the right. We pay high price. You have the right. But what are you trying to accomplish? It's not making him better. This is a guy on your team. I was talking with somebody in St. Louis. Peter, you know they never boo anybody in St. Louis, ever? That's why players love to play there. They never boo anybody. You, the, the, the team right now is having the worst season of all time. Dating back to like 1900, they don't get booed. And then when a player comes back like Harrison Bader, they give him a standing ovation. Matt Carpenter got a standing ovation. Now, these two guys played well for the Cardinals. They weren't great players. They got treated like Albert Pujols coming back. Very odd. Very odd to me. I don't get it. I don't understand it. It makes no sense. And again, the question is to what end? But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Aaron Hicks. Why do you hate him so much that you're booing him to this level? And you can't really say that it's about... Um, it's just a couple of fans. No, 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 no. I'm in the ballpark. It's not just a couple of fans. It's not just a couple of fans. Those are Diamond Notes brought to you by London Jewelers, the engagement experts. Visit London Jewelers today at any of their seven locations, including the newest location at the mall at Shore Hills. 
All right, speaking of the Yankees, we have the Yankees starting lineup on 98.7 ESPN, brought to you by beating down the neck of the Baltimore Orioles, who are the darlings of baseball because they've had such an unbelievable start. So they're two games back of the Orioles, and they have two more games left in the series tonight and tomorrow. And Yankee fans are really upset by the way the Yankees have played. This is going to have a very Yankee boy tinge to it, Peter. All right, I'm ready for it. You should be celebrating the way they're playing. You see the team they're running out there, and they're 10 games over 500. You see what the Padres are doing? You see what the Cardinals have done? This is a team that was expected to make the playoffs and win the Central. You see what the Mets have done, although they've won three in a row, and I'm still, I'm still bullish on the fact that the Mets will make the playoffs. Peter's not. But take a look at teams. Take a look at the Astros. And the Yankees have suffered injuries like really big injuries. So Aaron Judge is out for how long, we don't know. Carlos Rodon hasn't pitched yet. He will pitch on Friday. Nestor Cortez, an all-star last year, is going to be end up missing over two and a half, three months. Jonathan Loisica, who is arguably the Yankees' best relief pitcher, hasn't pitched yet. DJ LeMay, who's hitting 220. Josh Donaldson is hitting under 140. And they're 10 games over 500. And you're complaining? You should be celebrating the fact that how, how great they've played. With this team that they're running out, Jake Bowers batting cleanup. Now, I know I, I, I can almost hear it. Well, they have no depth. Well, nobody has depth to replace uh, Aaron Judge. Nobody has depth to replace losing 60% of your starting rotation. Montas, Rodon, and Nestor Cortez. Nobody has that depth. But somehow the Yankees make it work. So if you don't like the way the team is constructed... Let's also say not something else. Why are we killing Boone? Aaron Boone has managed this team that has been ravaged by serious injury to a 10-game over 500 record. The Astros aren't having a great year now. They just took three out of four from uh, the Texas Rangers, and they've had some bad injuries too. But they're not running away with anything. And everybody expected them to easily win the West. Now the Texas Rangers are in the lead. So, as I was driving home yesterday, I'm thinking, this is, this is pretty amazing what they're doing. Because the, the team that they're running out there, hey, here's a little secret, everybody. They're not that great. They're not that great. Look at the talent they're running out there. They're not that great. I don't think they should be 10 games over 500 with the people they're running out there. And with the season, some important people are having, like DJ LeMayu. But instead, you just want to attack them for how bad they are. Take a look at their record when Harrison Bader's not in the lineup. It's three games under 500. they They're about a 700 win percentage when he is in the lineup. Now, he's out of the lineup until he got hit with a pitch. I spoke to him after the game. He said it was okay, but maybe they're just giving him a day. They are much better without with, with him in the lineup. He didn't start the season with them because of injury. And then when he came back, he got injured again, so he went on the IL again. So he's a pretty important part of this team. But somehow they patch it and make it work. But that's not good enough for some. Instead, you want to just say all the bad things. Well, they haven't won since 2009. Uh, oh, okay. I get it. I've lived it. I understand it. Well, their, their, their mission statement is that they've got to win every single year. I, I know. I, I've heard it. I, I get it. It's a dumb mission statement, especially the way baseball is now. But it is their mission statement. And Howell was on with us and didn't back off of it. So I get that that gets you angry. But don't you have to look at this team and go, you know what, the one thing that we asked them to do with Judge out is play over about 500. That's exactly what they've done. There have been stinky moments. They, they go on a road trip where they play two last-place teams and they go three and three. That's not good enough, but it is 500. And I know Cashman gets killed about everything. And some of it's valid and most of it's not. But one thing that nobody ever celebrates is the fact that he puts together a bullpen every single year that is not just good, but great. They have the best ERA of any bullpen in the major leagues. He finds Nick Ramirez's. He finds Ian Hamilton's. And before the stupid thing that Jimmy Cordero did, he finds Jimmy Cordero. Although you do sort of, you sort of have to use that as a red mark that he found Jimmy Cordero. Well, we don't, I mean, do we know that Jimmy Cordero had that in him? No, but he's now not usable for the rest of the season, and this isn't the first time that they've made a, a, a character 
judgment flaw, uh, a character flaw judgment. Well, that's fair if you want to go that if you want to go that length. Just put it out there. But he never had it. He, it's not like they went out and got a guy who did that. It's not like they went out and got Trevor Bauer. It's not like when they got Domingo Herman, that was on his record. If you go out and get somebody that has that on their record, I think that's on you. If you get somebody who does it while he's with you, I don't know if it's on you. But yeah, they, I don't know they, how to make they, those judgments. Clay, Clay Holmes was nothing with the Pirates. Nothing. You know what? They said, this guy's pretty good. Jonathan Loisaga. Nobody thought Jonathan Loisaga could be great. You know what? When he's healthy, he's great. Do you know Wandy Peralta has been an outstanding pitcher in their bullpen? They got him for Mike Talkman. Now, Mike Talkman's having a pretty good season now with the Cubs. He spent the last three years or two years in, in the Far East playing. Couldn't get on with the major league team. And they got Wandy Peralta out of him. Look at the Mets. The Mets bullpen's not good. A lot of teams struggle with their bullpen. The Yankees, over and over and over again, somehow, with the scraps that they get from other places, they get a great bullpen. Matt Blake deserves a lot of credit. The Yankee front office deserves a lot of credit. Finding these people, and they become unbelievable contributors. Nick Ramirez? They won the game on Monday because of Nick Ramirez. He got five of the biggest outs in the game. But again, no credit. No credit for actually being 10 games over 500 with the with the lineup that you're running out there. And the people that aren't hitting that you're supposed to depend on hitting. This is the worst season that DJ LeMay has ever had. But they keep they keep persevering. Do you know that Anthony Rizzo has not had a home run in 34 games? Not what but you want. They, they keep persevering. Do you know that until like 16, 17 games ago, Anthony Volpe was hitting one, under 190? Now he's found it, but they keep persevering. Oh, boy. Today, you know, today people are coming for your head today. Today, Michael K. showed up on a Wednesday, and it is Show the Yankee Love Radio. Appreciate your Yankee radio. I can't wait to hear what happens. I can't wait either. Bring it on, because I'm right. Hey, keep it smart this summer with Smart Water.